Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my November 2020 book haul. Uh, no, book wrap-up, sorry. These are all the books I read in November. So we're going to start here with uh, Troilus and Cressida by William Shakespeare. I actually read this as a bedtime book, but it was quite enjoyable. Um, so I believe it's... Is it the Aeneid? It's a retelling of something, anyway. Uh, it's been a while since I've read it, to be honest. But I did enjoy it. I thought it was really beautifully written. It didn't hold my attention the way that some other Shakespeare plays have. But overall, it was pretty good. And uh, yeah, like 3.5 out of 5. So that brings us on to A Counter Clock World by Philip K. Dick. And this was excellent. So the idea, the concept here, is that uh, time is sort of reversed. So instead of people dying and being buried, people are waking up in their graves. And these other dudes have this like job where they have to go and dig people out of their graves, basically, where they've been buried alive. Uh, and then uh, a famous like civil rights leader gets reborn and so people are like vying for what's going to happen and who's basically going to have control because some people want to kill him before he starts a second civil rights movement or whatever. Bearing in mind this was written in 67 and it name checks Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King was shot and killed in 68. I think that's uh, pretty impressive. Philip K. Dick clearly had his fingers on the pulse. Overall I would give this like 4.25 out of 5. It started out a lot stronger than it ended but it was still worth reading and some good sci-fi. Full review coming soon if it isn't out already. Then I read Lives of the Stoics, The Art of Living from Zeno to Marcus Aurelius by Ryan Holiday and Steve Hanselman. So Ryan Holiday hosts The Daily Stoic here on YouTube, so I've very recently got into his channel. I haven't really watched that much of his content, to be honest. Um, I actually bought this book on the same day that I subscribed to a bunch of Stoicism YouTube channels. And uh, his channel turned out to be one of the ones that uh, I'd subscribed to. So it was kind of cool watching one of his videos uh, and then realising that he'd written this book that was already on its way to me. I read it, I did enjoy it, some excellent non-fiction if you're interested in learning more about Stoicism. Basically one of the core ideas is like you should accept what you can't change and focus on what you can change and just be the most sort of virtuous version of yourself that you can. Uh, as you can see I've got a, a lot of tabs in this to talk to you guys about and uh, Susie and I are going to be doing a video over on um, uh, Lord Literature and Madam Media as well so link below for that, check that out because it's going to be good, we're going to wear togas. Full review coming soon of that as well. Okay, that brings us on to Be Green, Don't Be Blue, Be Green, How to Help Save Our Planet by Monica Sheehan. This is a very short but sweet little book. I got this second hand for like 50p at an outdoor book market in Litchfield with my mum. It's like, you know, vote for Mother Earth, vote for our children's future, vote for green candidates. And uh, I mean, Biden got in today at the time of filming, so, so that's something. Uh, yeah, overall, probably like 3.5 out of 5. If you know anything about being green, you're not going to learn anything from this. It's all very, very basic stuff. But it's quite cute. Uh, some nice illustrations. It does make me laugh that this was printed in China on paper. So, not that green. <laughs> so, the next few books I read. Then I read Black Beauty according to Spike Milligan. This is basically Spike Milligan's retelling of Black Beauty. Uh, in his own inimitable style. Uh, it's very humorous. You're probably going to only really enjoy it if you like either Spike Milligan or Black Beauty, but um, it was alright. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. I actually generally don't like books with talking animals in them, um, but it, yeah, I mean, I got over it for this because the, you know, the horse kept saying bugger and stuff like that, so it was quite funny. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5. Another one that I've tabbed out to do a review of. Then I read The Outsider by Albert Camus, so this is like a very philosophical novel really. In some ways it reminded me of The Old Man and the Sea and that not a huge amount happened in it per se. I mean I suppose towards the end it really kind of picks up action wise, but mostly it's more of a character study. Uh, it basically follows a guy who's sort of condemned to death because he didn't show any sorrow when his mother died. Um, and it kind of investigates the moral implications of all that and we get to see inside his head and stuff. Overall cracking read would recommend. And that leaves us with this one, which is The Living Room by Graham Greene. Um, this is a play. Uh, two acts, I think two acts of two scenes each, I want to say. Um, pretty decent little play. It basically takes place in this house where every time somebody dies, they close off the room. Uh, and then we get to the point where basically there's only the living room left. Um, without giving away too many spoilers. I really enjoy Graham Greene. He's one of my favourite authors. And uh, I did 
enjoy this one quite a lot. I would give it like a 4.25 out of 5. Um, it's quite a short play, so there isn't a huge amount to say about it, but again, I'll be doing a review of it soon. All right, guys, just the one book to update you on, and that is Sad Cypress by Agatha Christie. Uh, this is a Hercule Poirot story, although he doesn't really come into it until about halfway through. Uh, very much worth reading still though. It's got a lot of the, um, you know, common tropes for Agatha Christie. It actually tied in quite well with um, Mara from Books Like Woe did a video on how to tell who did it in, a, in, in an Agatha Christie novel. And I think this fit in with all of the tropes that she discussed in there. Uh, but overall, I mean, I'm running out of Christie that I haven't read now. Um, so it's always just a delight to pick one up and to still enjoy it. And I did enjoy this one. I would give it a four out of five. Alright, just the one book to update you on today, and that is The Early Asimov, Volume 1 by Isaac Asimov. This is a collection of his short stories, as the title suggests, it's his earlier work. Um, what's most interesting to me here is to see um, like the process behind it. So he talks a lot about the history behind the stories, where he got the ideas from, where he submitted them, what the response was from the editors, all that sort of stuff. And because, again, these are early stories, it's really interesting just to see that formative part of his career. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the best collection of his stories, so not one to like go out of your way to start with. But um, it's pretty good, and again, if you're a, an, an Isaac Asimov fan, you're going to want to see where it all started from and to go back to the beginning. So uh, I give it like a 3.5 out of 5. Alright guys, just the bomb book to update you on, and that is Philip K. Dick, Time Out of Join. Uh, as you can see, I've tabbed it to do a review. Uh, classic science fiction. It's a bit like the Truman Show. Uh, basically, this main character starts to realise that maybe his reality isn't the real reality and it's being constructed around him. Uh, it's also a bit of a novel out of joint because it kind of jumps between everything's normal and fine and then everything's mad and then everything's normal and fine again and there's no like it goes from extreme to extreme and sometimes it's just a bit hard to swallow because of that it almost feels like a pacing issue um, I also feel as though the story's kind of been done but I wouldn't be surprised if Dick was the first one to do it uh, overall I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 it was just okay Alright guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is The Big Four by Agatha Christie. So, uh, this is a Hercule Poirot story. Uh, basically, it, it was a really good one in terms of it has like four adversaries instead of one, and I actually think like a movie of this could do really well, because you could have an ensemble cast. Uh, gripping like enough story by itself quite different to some of the other stuff I've seen from Agatha Christie and uh, I'm quite glad that I left this towards the end for like fairly obvious reasons if you read it I don't want to give you any spoilers or anything like that, but uh, overall yes I did very much enjoy reading it and I would recommend it uh, four out of five uh, I would have said it was a good one to start with if you're new to Christie, but maybe not actually in, in, in hindsight But yeah, check it out Hello homies, oh YouTube, oh hello. Uh, I've just got the one book to update you on today and that is A Piano in the Pyrenees by Tony Hawks. This is humorous travel writing, uh, well I guess not really travel writing I guess, it's just, it's a true story. Um, he's previously written Round Island with a fridge where he goes around all of Ireland with a fridge and gets like hitchhiking lifts and stuff. In this one he basically almost on a whim bought a house in the French Pyrenees um, and yeah this book is basically about him going to live out there and about the adventures he has on the way and stuff um, yeah it was pretty good I enjoyed it uh, it did drag a bit towards the end I suppose but uh, overall I gave it like a 3.5 maybe a 3.75 out of 5 it was pretty good all right I've just got the two books to update you on at the moment uh, one of them has disappeared. There's somebody beeping outside. Here it is. Um, I finished reading I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Uh, this is a true crime book. Uh, I was reading this as my bedtime book and reading like 20, 30 pages at a time. I appreciate that wouldn't necessarily work for anyone on account of the fact that it is true crime and it's about uh, the Golden State Killer. He was like, he was basically a serial killer and a serial rapist as well. Um, I don't need to say too much about this book because it's been on booktube quite a lot and in fact that's it's through booktube that I heard about it. Um, it is true crime, a lot of it's based on Mich Michelle McNamara's um, blog. She actually died fairly young and so uh, some of the work is done after the fact by her husband who happens to be Patton Oswalt, the American comedian. Um, but I looked up how she died and it sounds, I don't know how she died, but I th she had like three different drugs in the system. One of them was fentanyl which is what you use like as a heroin substitute. So bit weird that but um yeah it was an interesting little read and it's made more interesting by the fact that the golden state killer was actually captured so i basically as soon as i finished reading this i went straight onto the wikipedia page for the golden state killer just to kind of catch up with what i you know had happened after the release of this book uh, overall i gave it like 3.75 maybe even a four out of five it's good 
um, true crime to me. I, I didn't really. I've heard people complain that maybe it was a bit unfinished, which it kind of is because she died. You know, like it's, it's going to have to be by its very nature. But um, it didn't detract, detract from the reading of the book for me. Okay, and then we have Towards Zero by Agatha Christie. This is an Inspector Battle book. It's not a particularly interesting character, and it wasn't a particularly interesting plot, unfortunately. Uh, and I think I only have two more Christie books to read after this one, so I was hoping for more from this. Um, it just overall was a bit of a letdown. I always say that Christie at her worst is still better than mess most at their best, though. So it is still worth reading if you're like a Christie completionist, but it's definitely not somewhere to start with. Uh, I gave it like a 3.25 out of 5. You can check out the full review, I've done it on it if you want to find out more about why I did that. Go on. Alright, a few wrap up bits to uh, share with you guys. So I've got quite a few actually. I read The Cat in the Hat Comes Back and Green Eggs and Ham by uh, Dr. Seuss. So I gave uh, probably 3.75 out of 5 for The Cat in the Hat Comes Back, 3.5 out of 5 for Green Eggs and Ham. They're alright, I'm just slowly ticking them off as part of my reading of all the Dr. Seuss books. Then I read Mill Girl, The Diary of Eliza Helstead, Manchester, 1842 to 1843. This is by Sue Reed. Um, quite fun little book. It's like a historical YA fiction, I guess, um, written in the form of a diary and just does some good stuff of kind of exposing what the conditions were like during the Victorian era for, you know, young Mancunians, I guess. So that was quite cool. I gave that like 3.75 out of 5. And then... I also read Romeo et Juliet by William Shakespeare. This is Romeo and Juliet in French. Uh, overall, it was a challenge. It's taken me like six months to get to the end of it, but um, I enjoyed it. So there is that, and I learned a few new bits of dialect and a dialogue and stuff. So yeah, uh, would recommend if you're studying French. So that is where I'm at for now, at least. I almost forgot, but I also reread Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. So I listened to it via audiobook. It was a lot of fun, um, it was for some reason missing part of it, so it wasn't an abridged version, it was just the problem with the audiobook where it missed a big chunk of it, um, or like 30-40 minutes of audio which is enough, you know, but I still enjoyed revisiting it, uh, I would probably give it a 4 out of 5 this time round, um, didn't quite enjoy it as much as I remember enjoying it, but then at this point I've read the story so many times, you know, that like the first few rereads, I could kind of read it afresh because I couldn't remember who did it and why and all that stuff. Whereas by this point, I pretty much know everything that's going to happen. So, but overall, did still enjoy it and it was good. All right, guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is Dangerous Days on the Victorian Railways by Terry Deary, the creator of Horrible Histories. This is non-fiction about the introduction of the railways and kind of covers a lot of, like, there were all kinds of disasters and lots of, like, regular people losing their lives. It's all very tragic because we don't, a lot of the time, we don't even know their names. We just know what's happened. And, like, you know, we're talking about, like, unnamed kids whose, like, heads got flattened and stuff. It's really messed up. It, it used the word fucker in this as well. So I'm not entirely sure who the target audience is because he usually writes for kids I guess this is for like teenagers because it doesn't feel really like an adult non-fiction book he also uses too many uh, footnotes throughout it to the point at which there are pages with like four footnotes and it kind of got a little bit tiresome and repetitive to, to keep going down and read those but uh, overall still some good information in it 3.5 out of 5 it took me longer to read than I was expecting actually but uh, I'm glad I ticked it off and I'll probably be adding the other dangerous days books to my wish list Alright, anyway, those are all the books that I read in the month of November. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.